Hello everybody, this is Tim for the last Halloween review here. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, Family is Forever, Unrated Director's Cut. So this is Rob Zombie's, what he considers true version of the film. So you can get a look at my DVD there. Family is forever, but quality is not. <laughs> but anyway, to jump right into this film here, this is not a good film. I'll go ahead and give my rating one and a half stars of Impossible 4. This is the second worst film in the franchise. It's worse than Halloween 5. It's not as bad as Resurrection, but pretty close. This is the second worst film after Resurrection. So, uh, to jump right into the story of the film here, the movie picks up, the beginning of the film picks up right after the ending of the last film, which is reminiscent of the beginning of Halloween 2, the original. Uh, you got Lori, who's being taken to the hospital, who's played by Scott Tyler Compton again. You got Michael Myers, who's being hauled away in a, in a van. And fucking, um, they're, the guy who's in the van is, like, talking about fucking corpses and shit, and I'm like, Rob, you can't come up with quirky, like, sick, uh, disgusting conversations like this and make them entertaining, like, Quentin Tarantino can. You're not the Tarantino of horror directors. Give it up, man. Just give it up. <laughs> but anyway, and then they hit a random cow, and I'm like, okay, they steal this scene from Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. <laughs> so they hit a random cow. Then one of the dude that was driving, his fucking face is obliterated. Good makeup effects. The other dude is wounded. And he says fuck like 27,000 times. He's like, fuck, 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 fuck. And it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> And then Michael Myers gets out of the back of the vehicle, gets a shard of glass, and fucking slits his throat completely open like multiple times. And you, he cuts his whole head off eventually, and you can see it going through. Uh, decent kill, and then you get the stupidest shit in a Halloween film ever. Where Michael Myers is hallucinating Cherry Moon Zombie. Uh, is dressed up as her character from Living Dead Girl, the music video, with a fucking white horse. And I just picture this horse talking to Michael Myers going, Kill him, Michael! Kill them all! <laughs> they don't like you! <laughs> I just think it's funny. I just the way I picture it, as the horse is like showing so much. But anyway, and Cherry Moon Zombie feels so forced back in this movie. I don't hate her like some people do. I think she's an okay actor. She's passable. But when she's forced into a Rob Zombie movie because he likes to use her over and over, uh, when she's forced in, I, I hate it. I can't stand it. And this is one where she's forced in. She's forced in here. There's no reason for her to be back. And you get a flashback scene of Little Michael Myers played by a different actor who's cuter, but not as good acting wise at all, who doesn't have the acting talent of the boy from the first movie. And this movie is completely different than the first Rob Zombie Halloween. It's kind of like they gave him restrictions for the first movie and then this one they just said fuck it. The first one made money, do anything you want to Rob. People seem to like your shit so just go crazy. It's kind of like Rob Zombie just jerked off and then splatted a big cum wad of like different shit on the screen. Like of his ideas and shit roaming through his head. But yeah, this film sucks. <laughs> but anyway, to jump back into it, little kid Michael Myers tells a uh, his mom, Sherry Moon, that he fucking had a dream of her with a white horse. And I'm like, okay. And so for some reason, just based off that dream, uh, adult Michael Myers sees her as like his driving force to kill. Michael Myers doesn't need that. What the fuck is that there for? That feels like such a forced way in for her to be there. Because she's the one that like tells him what to do, basically, and tells him to go out and kill people. It's like his manifestation of his killing urge a little bit. I mean, in a way, at least it felt like that way to me. And he even hallucinates like his little kid self, like talking to her, like he's talking to her, to like his innocent little kid self. I'm like, okay. He's trying to like be like a David Lynch fucking Halloween movie. It's not going to work here, Rob. You don't have the talent, buddy. I'm sorry. But uh, Rob Zombie just walks around. I mean, not Rob Zombie, but Michael Myers, who, who looks so much fucking like Rob Zombie, walks around the whole movie with a big hobo coat on. A fucking long ass beard it doesn't even wear the mask to the whole movie, and so you're thinking, Oh gosh, is this even Michael Myers? I mean, you can change your character in sequels and stuff and add more to them, but especially since it's a new version of the character. But once you've drained like everything from the character of how he originally was, there this character has nothing left, slightly even resembling Michael Myers now at this point. And Dr. Loomis is also completely drained, he, where he has nothing left resembling the original Dr. Loomis at all. He's a complete different character. He's a total asshole in this movie. He's profiteering off the violence and everything that happened to the characters from the first film. Uh, and he fucking has... There's this funny scene, though, in the movie where he's uh, looking at a picture of uh, his self from the first movie where he's wearing the jacket that Don Pleasant, similar to what Don Pleasant wore in the original film, where he's going, Old Loomis, New Loomis, Old Loomis, New Loomis. Well, I think Old Loomis, I'm sorry there, <laughs> Rob, I'll take Old Loomis. But yeah, he's a complete dick face in this movie. And you got like three three stories going on at the same time. You got Lori's arc, which most of the movie is told from her point of view, which is the main arc. And then you got fucking, uh, Don, uh, almost, you got fucking uh, Loomis's arc where he's been an asshole. And then you got Michael Myers' mini arc where he's a hobo walking around in the hills, um, stealing stuff. <laughs> 
and uh, hanging out at barns. And you guys seen with these rednecks who like run the farm, like show up there and start beating the shit out of him. And uh, they beat the shit out of him really. And then he puts on his he puts on his Michael Myers mask. He only puts the mask on when he gets ready to kill somebody. Really, he puts it on like the front lights of the vehicle are on, shining at him. So it's like kind of like an iconic little look for him to put the mask on. I mean, uh, image wise, he puts the mask on, kills those two guys. Michael Myers stabs people like twenty times a piece in this movie. It feels like it, and it's so overdone. It comes off as stupid and overkill. But uh, Michael Myers uh, kills uh, kills the rednecks and then fucking eats their dog. <laughs> And you got a scene where Lori is like eating vegetarian uh, pizza and then she somehow can taste the meat like in her mouth that Michael Myers is eating from the dog and she like goes to vomit. And I'm like, movie directors, just because people are related does not mean they have a psychic link. Please stop this shit. It is not true. <laughs> and just because people are related doesn't mean that they have the same hallucinations. And Lori has hallucinations also of Sherry Moon. And I'm like, she doesn't even know what her real mom looked like. So how can she have hallucinations of somebody she doesn't even know? <laughs> And she has hallucinations of Little Michael Myers again. She had no idea what Little Michael Myers looked like. So how the fuck could she have hallucinations of somebody she don't even know? <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> That's stupid. Um, and you got Annie in the film. Most likable character in this film is Sheriff Brackett. Uh, Annie is obnoxious and uh, Lori is even more obnoxious. I don't care what you've been through in your life. If you treat everybody like shit and constantly act like a douchebag. Uh, and uh, cuss 24 7 over and over non-stop at everybody that just tries to talk to you then you're an asshole and nobody wants nothing to do with you <laughs> but anyway Lori's character in this film like she has flip out scenes scenes that are shot like a music video and they just flash 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 straight towards the screen with just like her screaming like cuss words and everything and Annie screaming cuss words and shit like she's being killed by Lori you get stupid ass scenes where like uh, Lori's having like a, a nightmare where she's killing Annie similar to how William Forsythe was killed in the first movie with being taped to the chair and uh, except this time it's Lori killing Annie that way. So, so it's like the basic idea of like kind of like Halloween 4 where uh, Jamie was going slightly crazy. And in this film you get uh, Lori doing the same thing and she kills Annie in the sequence or whatever. I mean in her nightmare or daymare. <laughs> but uh, it's like how could she have a dream that's like exactly the same as uh, <laughs> as what Michael Myers did in the first movie. That's ridiculous and stupid. But anyway... So Lori all through the movie, like Annie, even Annie is obnoxious sometimes too. She walks in, Lori's drinking a beer, and she's like, "What's with all the beer?" Like being obnoxious and like jackass. And uh, of course, Lori flies off, and she's like, "You stupid bitch! You better back the fuck off!" And I'm like, "Okay, she's so fucking annoying in this movie." And she's got like some new hip rebel friends, and I'm like, "This doesn't even fit the character from the first movie, really." Cause I don't mind like the 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 look and feel the movie being changed and Michael Myers character somewhat being experimented with even though he's too experimented with in this movie too changed but when you completely change like the character every character I mean Laurie after what she'd been through in the first movie she would not be hanging out with like rebellious teenage girls who one's a slut and the other one's like some blonde chick she would not have a picture of Charles Manson on her wall that would not <laughs> that just seems like something robs on me like stuff he fetishizes about and just puts in the movies just to put them in there there's no reason for that shit to be there Rob, just because you like something doesn't mean that it fits characters. I'm sorry, it doesn't, Rob. <laughs> but anyway, so you get stupid shit like that, arguing 24 7. Um, in the movie, oh, in the movie, you get a, you, like I said, the film split into three, three uh, little uh, acts or three little stories. I mean, you got the Loomis one, you got the Michael Myers Hobo one, Hobo Myers with his hood. He uh, he goes to like the Rabbit and Red, the strip joint from the first film. He's fucking, uh, he goes there and kills the guy, plays the Geico Caveman, those commercials, uh, stomps his face in, he's out taking out trash, so he stomps his face in, decent makeup effects, he walks in there, some fat dude's fucking a stripper, and, you know, this just seems like it's just here just to have more kills, like there's no, it doesn't really impact the story at all, so he seems, he goes in there, and the fat dude jerks on a gun, goes right up to him, right up to him, like right here, even though he has enough space where he just shoot him, he goes right up to him, right here, Michael Myers grabs him and kills him, I'm like, you stupid son of a bitch, what did you expect? <laughs> but anyway, so fat ass gets killed. He gets uh his arm broken and he gets hit against the wall. And then the stripper gets her head bashed in in the in the uh, the mirror. So that's a decent kill scene. She rips off like part of Michael Myers' face, like more than his face, his mask, which is like looks even worse in this film, like decayed wise. The mask looks okay. Uh, and uh, Lori finds out that she's really Michael Myers' sister, Angel Myers. <laughs> 
Oh, she reads Dr. Loomis's book that he's wrote because Dr. Loomis is a douchebag and doesn't give a fuck about anybody in this movie. Uh, he doesn't even give a shit about anybody until he goes on this talk show and fucking Weird Al's there and they make fun of him and then he gets off the show and he's like, you know what, I really am an asshole. <laughs> and he inadvertently gets thrown back into the plot at the end in such a stupid forced way because he's he doesn't even do anything with the main story of this film. He has like his own story. He has nothing to do with this film until the end, the main story. And at the end of it, he sees Lori where she's been kidnapped on TV. And he, he's just like, oh, I better go do something. Because you know, luckily he was watching TV at that random time. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Sheriff Brackett is the most likable character in the film. Uh, he gets some interesting scenes. Uh, Annie gets killed in this film. Daniel Harris does. She gets killed like off camera, but it, you hear them sounds. And it's kind of an interesting way she dies. I kind of like this. It's like left up to your imagination. And it's, it's, done, it's done well. Uh, you get Sheriff Brackett come back there, and he finds his daughter dead, finds Annie dead, and he seems, you have, like, little footage of her as a kid with a puppy. That's overkill. That's too much in your face to try to force you to feel sorry for the character. That's too much, Rob. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, Brad Dourif plays it decently, though. He's fine in his acting. Um, in the, um, her, uh, well, after, after, uh, Lori finds out that she's really Michael Myers' sister, she fucking, after she reads the book, she gets mad because she knows that uh, Annie's dad, Sheriff Brackett, knew that, that uh, she was his sister and that he's kept it from her this whole time. So she cusses Annie out because she cusses her about in this movie over anything. And she fucking just leaves. And then that's when you get Annie getting killed. Uh, she leaves. She goes to visit her new hip friends. And Gloria is so obnoxious in this movie. Like, she finds out she's Michael Myers' sister. She's just hollering in the vehicle just because some dude goes by and honks. She's like... Fuck you, I'm Michael Myers' sister, woo, let's go get drunk, let's get wasted, and I'm like, okay, no one would, I don't think anyone would react this way in real life, but whatever, and so she goes, and her and her two friends go to a party dressed up with Rocky Horror Picture Show characters, which is decent, but not enough to save this shit sandwich, they go to the party dressed up with Rocky Horror Picture Show characters, the slut girl's getting ready to fuck this dude, he goes out to take a piss, he gets stabbed in the back by Michael Myers, really quick death, not really, even, I can hardly even see it, really, it's so dark. Uh, the slut girl gets killed, Michael Myers busts through, like, the back window of the vehicle and grabs her on the neck, and she's in the van, grabs her by the neck, and fucking just crunch, and she's dead, that's it. You know, I don't think you hear the crunch, it's just like, cock, she's dead. So the slut's dead. Uh, the other two, Lori and the blonde-haired girl, head back to Annie's house. Michael Myers comes there, just stabs the blonde-haired girl. Michael Myers, like, I, uh, fucking overstabs everybody in this film. The knife is used way too much in this film. Uh, I would like some more inventive kills, but this is nothing but knife stabbing. Like, all seemed like it to me nonstop, like 27 times a piece per person. <laughs> so, uh, Lori then finally sees Annie's body, and it's a decent scene um, where she finds her dad, and she's like feeling really bad about it. And I actually like that. Uh, I'll give the movie that one. So, Michael Myers chases after her. She sees him. She gets the fuck out of there. And then you get Sheriff Brackett, who shows up there, and that's when you get the scene where the her, like, as a little girl or whatever, with him mourning over her death, which was okay until it old footage of her with a puppy or whatever, which is forced at us to try to make us feel sympathy for the character. That was too much. Uh, but anyway, so Lori's running through the hills and shit, and she runs into this guy. She gets ready to get in his vehicle. Michael Myers kills him. Big surprise. The people in this film, Michael Myers kills everybody, just about it. Everybody in this film is, like, useless. They don't amount to shit. My, uh, Rob Zombie's like, watch how depressing I can make a movie. Watch how much of an asshole every character I have is. Watch how meaningless life is. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Rob. And I'm thinking, man, if you want to make a depressing movie, that's fine. But actually make characters where I can give a fuck about them to where I will be depressed. Because I really didn't give shit after this movie's over, to be honest. I wasn't depressed. I was happy it's over. <laughs> I was ecstatic. The only person I was depressed that died was really Annie. And that's only because Daniel Harris is the more likable character in this film than anybody other than Sheriff Brackett. She's not. She's a still obnoxious, but she's not as obnoxious as the other characters. But, uh... You get a scene where Michael Myers kills the dude who's going to you know, drive uh, Lori out of there, and he fucking flips the entire car over. A decent scene. Then you got a fucking Sherry Moon showing up again. Take us home, Michael. <laughs> or something like that. The last she says that at the end of the movie, but she's... Uh, they, he, he fucking picks up Lori and takes her to this barn that he's been hoboing at for the whole movie. So he takes her out to this barn. And then you get a stupid plot hole here, or a stupid ass... Uh, reason for Sheriff Brackett to go out somewhere, to go out there, they, well, it's a stupid-ass reason for them to find out where Michael Myers is, uh, Sheriff Brackett, they, like, the police get a call, and the deputy walks up to Sheriff Brackett, and he's like, Sheriff, you just got a call, some random woman just saw, uh, Michael Myers carrying away a, a girl, 
to a barn. And I'm like, okay, where the fuck was this person? Where did she see him at? Where was she from? That's just like such a stupid ass thrown in way just to get Sheriff Brackett and everybody there. The police there. Uh, this film sucks. Uh, Lords of Salem is almost is bad. Uh, this is the beginning of Rob Zombie's downward spiral, downward spiral for his career, and his films just get worse and worse. But anyway, so uh, Sheriff Brackett heads out there to where the barn is, so he can try to save Lori. He heads out there. And, uh, luckily, Loomis is watching TV at the exact time and realizes, "Now I've been a, such a fucking douchebag. I better go, uh, you know, try to do something." So he goes there <laughs> to try to try to help in some way, shape, or form. But by now, it's too late. This doesn't even seem like. Loomis, this Loomis, he's been such a douchebag that I don't even think that he would even give a fuck, honestly, if this was happening. Uh, but luckily, he was watching TV at the exact right time. But anyway, he heads out there, and he's like, let me try to draw Michael out, he's never going to respond to hostage negotiation, which is fucking obvious. <laughs> he's going to try to draw Michael Myers out, or Hobo Myers, I mean, out. So he, uh, Sheriff Brackett punched him in the face because he blames him for... Uh, Lori getting in trouble and running away and getting in this situation, which is kind of his fault, but it's really Lori's too because she's a fucking moron. But anyway, um, so he runs out there and uh, distra uh, distracts, um, well, he tries to get Michael, he tries to save Lori and he's like telling her to get out there and Lori's having like hallucinations of little Michael Myers holding, it, holding him down for some reason. Once again, you can't hallucinate the same shit as someone else, not just because you're related to them. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but anyway, and, uh, Michael Myers like charges at him and knocks him to the side of the wall or whatever. And, uh, he lifts him up and Loomis is standing there and he's like, Michael, stop, please. And he, Michael Myers takes off his mask because apparently he knew this was the end and you get to hear Michael Myers speak for the first time. And uh, he, well, adult Myers, and he goes, die, and stabs him the Loomis in the fucking gut. And so Loomis is, is, Loomis is dead. So his entire... So, uh, well, let me get to this. So, Lori, uh, then they shoot the fuck, Sheriff Brackett and everybody shoot the fuck out of Michael Myers, blow him away. So, Michael Myers is dead. He's dead. Because uh, this is the last Rob Zombie film for his Halloween franchise. They're not going to make a direct sequel to this film. They're just not. Just because of the way this film ends. They're just not going to do it. Uh, so, uh, so he's dead. Um, then Lori walks out there and she picks up a knife like she's getting ready to stab Loomis, even though I'm pretty sure he's already dead, so... She kind of seems like she's going to stab him, but at the same time, she doesn't seem like she's going to. But uh, it's like, has she went, turned into Michael Myers now? <laughs> and then she gets some random deputy just shoots her, because she's standing there with a knife, just shoots her. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> That's so stupid, such a dumbass way for the character to be ended, and her character arc to end. So she just falls over, and now she's dead too, and the last image she has is of a Sherry Moon zombie with a white horse. And so it's like, this is the last image she has, and she's smiling like, eee, I'm crazy. And so it's like, oh, gee, you know, she's turned into Michael Myers, too. So with her last image, she's went completely crazy, too, while she's dying. Oh, you're so depressing, Rob Zombie. You're so artsy. This is artsy-fartsy bullshit. <laughs> symbolism, symbolism bullshit with a horse and fucking Sherry Moon Zombie who don't need to be there. This is bullshit. Sorry, Rob. Bullshit. Uh, but, um. Yeah, this film sucks. Uh, this is uh, this is probably the worst Rob Zombie film. Lords of Salem is only slightly better. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up what I think about these films, like all of them. This is depressing. This is a depressing way for this franchise to go out. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up what I think about all these films. Uh, but anyway, oh yeah, like I was gonna say, so Lori's dead, so <laughs> Doctor Loomis' sacrifice was completely in vain, so that amounted to nothing, so it's fucking useless. But anyway, uh. <laughs> So Lori's dead, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap up what I think about all these films and this franchise in general. Uh, and then I got a, a guest here at the end of this video. You're going to see a little cut, and then uh, he'll be here to talk about what he thinks about all these films as well. He'll give his roundup view on all of them. But anyway, for me, Halloween 1, best film out of them, four stars. Halloween 2, uh, three and a half stars. Um, third, uh, the not the best sequel, but pretty close. Uh, but definitely where the film should have ended. It had the right ending for the story. Uh, Halloween 3 uh, sucks. Just a worthless film. Uh, not even worth mentioning. It's complete shit. Uh, Halloween 4, three and a half star film. It's a really good film. The second best film in the franchise, I think. But once again, had no reason to exist. Really, like I've said, you can see like Halloween 1 and 2 is their own, their own universe. And then see... Uh, three is its own universe, obviously. It doesn't even count. Just throw three out of there. And see four, five, and six is their own universe. And then see uh, seven and eight, H2O and Resurrection is their own universe because they're both sellout films and they fit together. 
and H2O just doesn't fit together regardless of whether it picks up continuity wise from the first and second movie, even though it doesn't really even reference the second film that much. Uh, but uh, so you can see all those like their own universes, and then these last two Rob Zombie films is their own universe. Uh, like H2O, you can see it's just like uh, bridging off of a uh, off of maybe the original Halloween, but see it and Halloween uh, Resurrection is their own universe. Uh, so uh, oh yeah, back to what I was saying, just to round out the franchise, Halloween three sucks. Halloween four is second best sequel, but still didn't need to be made because Halloween two ends the story then the. The trio of characters, Laurie, Michael, and Loomis, fine. It ends it good. There's no reason for a four, but if you got to have four. Four ends the four ends the story of Michael Myers, but kind of like gives like gives like an idea that his legacy will continue in the in the form of Jamie. But then you get Halloween Five, which sucks ass, which that completely changes everything from Halloween Four. Throws it out there just like that. And it's utter shit. Uh, then you got Halloween Six, which is only just okay because it was chopped to shit and completely changed from what it originally was. And so there's not nothing really to the film. It's just so it's just weak. So it's only like a low two stars, barely better than uh, fucking uh, Halloween Five, really. And then you got a uh, Halloween H two O, which is a sellout film, which is just better than Halloween the three and uh, six and five, just barely because it's got that ending with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis duking it out with uh, Michael Myers, and then the scene of him her chopping his head off, which ends the franchise completely. Ends it done. Franchise over. The end. <laughs> that's where this is where that's where it stops for me. Nothing after that counts whatsoever. And then you get a uh, Halloween Resurrection, which the less said about that, the better. It's a joke. This film is a joke. Michael Myers is a joke in that film. There's no soul for the character left. It's over. Uh, then you got Rob Zombie's Halloween. No reason to exist. Doesn't even touch upon the classic of the original. Not a bad movie. Two and a half star film, but has no reason to exist. There's no just no reason for it to be here. Uh, and then you got Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, this one, uh, which I was I did say it was going to be the last Halloween video I'm doing, but it's not. I'm going to do uh, <clears throat> uh, Halloween 6, the producer's cut, a video for it, but that's just going to be like a little special thing. This is really, truly the last the last Halloween movie, because that's like, that's uh, the original version of Halloween 6. I mean, it's a Halloween movie, obviously, but... This is really where the my videos are going to end. That, the other one is just like a little special thing because I don't really have to do that film, but I'm going to do it anyway because I feel like it deserves to be talked about. But uh, just to end this here for for me, and then my guest is going to take over after this little cut, and he's going to tell what he thinks about the franchise. Uh, he's going to give his overview. Uh, just to end it here for me, watch the first two films. Watch four if you need to. Skip five and six. They're worthless. Uh, only watch the well if you have to watch anything else watch just the ending of h2o that's basically all you need the final act uh just let somebody tell you about what happens up until then and then don't ever watch uh, resurrection and then two rob zombie films don't bother unless you're a rob zombie fan um uh, but yeah that's basically my wrap up for this franchise and uh you're probably going to get a different opinion from my guest here in a minute when he gives his idea about what he thinks about the franchise uh, he just got off work. He uh, he's a radio uh, d uh, DJ, or he well he works on the radio. He like uh, you know gives a they call in and request songs and stuff, and he plays them for everybody and stuff like that. So he's getting off his day job just about right now, and he'll get on here on the video and give his idea about what he thinks about the films too. So I'll let him take over, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed these Halloween reviews, and I'll see you again with uh, the little special review of Halloween Six: The Producers Cut. What's up, motherfuckers? This is Michael Myers. I just got off work here. I'm here to state what I think about my own franchise. That little bitch Tim was done reviewing my movies. Yo, let's see what I think about these motherfuckers here. For the first film, I got Halloween 1, the original classic. It's four stars. If I could award it ten stars, I would. It takes a while for me to get into killing action with my stabbing, but I enjoy the stabbing when I get to the stabbing, you know what I'm saying? And I got Halloween 2, baby, which is another motherfucking masterpiece. And I get to do more shit in that. More stabbings. Even more stabbings. I get to fucking drown the bitch inside some fucking hot ass water. I lift the bitch up by the knife. Her body be jerking. I get to fucking do more stabbings. My ass is blown up at the end. Superstar Myers, baby. Superstar at this point. I fucking get through the third film. I ain't in it. Fuck that movie. Next film, number four. Number four, my ass is back. They think they got rid of me.
but I'm back. I got little burns on my hands, even though I got fucking obliterated at the end of number two. But I'm back anyway to kick more ass and more stabbings in this film. I fucking go after my niece. She manages to get the best of me. I get the fucking shit shot out of me by the police. Them bitches thought they killed me. But I'm like 50 cent, baby. You can shoot me. You can stab me. You can blow me up. But I come back like Tupac. I still make records. You come back, me, Halloween 5, another fucking masterpiece, like Halloween 1, 2, 3, suck a dick, number 4, masterpiece, number 5, another masterpiece, cause I'm fucking in it, I come back in that film, I whoop more ass, I kill a couple more people, a couple more stabbings, that old bastard Dr. Loomis thinks he can take me out, shoots me with some tranquilizers, tries to fucking beat me with a piece of wood, they take me to prison, the dumb bastards don't even take my mask off, but I don't mind cause I like the mask myself. It's a fashion statement, so I fucking escape. My fucking homie comes in there, the man in black, blows everybody away with the gap. I get out of there. I managed to make the fuck out of there. So you get the, that's another masterpiece. You get Halloween 6 after that. I'm hanging with all my homies, Dakota Thorn, with some new fucking tattoo I'm sporting on my hand, on my wrist, I mean. Some fucking killing motherfuckers left and right, and this son bitch too. Icing motherfuckers like a gangster. And then finally at the end of that, this son of bitch has the audacity to beat me in the head with a lead pop. Thinking he gangster, thinking he can take out the G unit, the big M. But I fucking survived that. I come back in Halloween 7, I'm still trucking. I go after the original bitch, Jamie Lee Curtis. I try to take her out, she chops my fucking head off. Is that all you got? I come back, Halloween Resurrection. I'm fucking killing, thrilling, chilling, and fucking swilling. I'm taking out everybody. I get in the fight with Buster Rhymes. He thinks his weak ass, skanky ass kung fu. Get that weak shit out of there. I can take me on. He does a couple kicks, but I survive. He shocks me in the dick. Okay, that may have hurt a little bit. And he manages to get the best one liner ever and take me out. Well, my favorite one liner ever of the franchise. Next to everything I say, of course. Well, I'll wait. I don't fucking say anything, but well, he gets the best one liner ever. Okay, I agree. But, uh, I don't fucking, that shit don't phase me. I come back, bust the food right enough to take me out. I come back, Rob Zombie's Halloween. I'm fucking still gangster. I'm killing everybody left and right. Slashing, gashing, cushing, fucking bushing and killing everybody. I can get my hands on strangulation. I like to use my hands, especially for the bitches. So I'm fucking killing everybody. And at the end, this bitch has the audacity to shoot me in the face. I'll call her Scott Taylor Compton, baby. Compton. She manages to fucking shoot me in the face, and I'm like, is that all you got, motherfucker? So I come back after that, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I may look like a hobo, but I'm still fucking slashing and gashing. Don't get me confused with Rob Zombie, because that motherfucker may be directing my movies, but he ain't gangster enough like me. So I'm still holding my shit. So I'm fucking slashing and gashing, killing more bitches, and motherfuckers left and right slash gash, cut a hole in your ass. So I'm still fucking killing everybody. I chase uh, Compton fucking... She thinks she hardcore because her name Compton. I chase her ass. I got her ass in a farmhouse. Sheriff Brackett think he get the best of me. Loomis think he get the best of me. I pull my mask off. I say, die, motherfucker. I take him out. And then I get shot down 27,000 fucking times. And I go out like a gangster. Like a fucking gangster. So to end this, all my movies, masterpieces. And to end this fucking little overview here of this franchise, I'm Michael Myers. I'm fucking number one. And I just want to say, trick or treat, motherfucker. How do you turn this fucking thing off?